All right, I am here playing a little bit of BeamNG Drive and inspired by Fail Race's video, Survive the Jump. I'm going to be trying this very similar challenge of me rolling these cars down this long ski jump and hoping that they survive. Anyways, we've got a Ibishu Pessima, which is a cross between a Toyota Camry and a Mazda 626. And, uh... Anyways, we'll get the car set and ready to go on the slope. Put it in a neutral. Move it just a little more. And off it goes. Down the hill it goes. It's going to be reaching insane speeds of at least 100 miles an hour. 110, 120, 140. Let's see how this car hangs and survives. It lands nose first. It lands on its roof. And both axles are done for. Therefore, this car ain't going to move under its own power. So we're going to have to try another strategy here. So off the Pessima goes again down the ramp it's ready to go supersonic speeds well almost so we're gonna try to coax it into landing on its wheels and just like the first attempt the car lands on its roof both axles are shot and of course, that means the car ain't going to move under its own power. So, maybe the third time will be the charm. Maybe I can get this thing landing on its wheels and perhaps able to drive under its own power. Well, we're about to find out. Remember, no brakes. Once again, both axles, both drive axles are shot. And the Abishu Pessima, well, at least this particular version, ain't going to make it in one piece. And now we're going to give the stock uh, Ibishu Miramar a try here. This old-fashioned compact sedan. Let's see if it can't, if they could make it down the ramp without sustaining fatal damage. Speed climbs rapidly over 100 miles an hour. 120, 140. It's twisting end over end. And the rear drive shaft is going to prevent this car from moving as it is snapped in half. So we're going to have to give it another go. Alright, we're going to give this Miramar another go down the ramp. It's gaining lots of speed very rapidly. Over 100 miles an hour once again. And in the air it goes. Let's see if I can coax it. And another broken drive shaft results for the Miramar. So now, one more time for the Miramar. Goes down the ramp once again. Hopefully this time we can get it to actually s stick the landing and perhaps survive to live another day. In the air it goes, it's twisting. And yep, you guessed it, another broken drive shaft. So, unfortunately, this Ibishu Miramar just isn't going to have the durability of going, jumping a ramp at insane speeds. So now we're going to give the Ibishu Pigeon a go at it. Um, obviously, this is reminiscent of the Reliant Robin with its single front wheel. These things were known to tip over, so we 
this particular one with stabilizers so it doesn't easily roll. Anyways, it's time for the pigeon to go down the ramp. As it quickly gains speed, stability could become a factor. But it's hanging on right now as it going 120, 130 miles an hour. Oh, one of the tires just blew up. The pigeon starts twisting end over end. The fuel tank punctured the cars on. There's some fire behind the vehicle. And unfortunately, it's not going to survive this attempt. So maybe I could try a slightly different strategy as this pigeon starts going down the ramp. Faster and faster it goes. The certainty of survival lessens. It's twisting. It lands on its roof. And another broken gas tank. But it lands on its weak... It lands, but it's not going anywhere fast. If perhaps that right rear axle and tire did not fall off the car, perhaps maybe it would have survived. Maybe we've got to make it land on its roof, hoping that it doesn't break any driveline components. So this is the third and final attempt for the Abyssu Pigeon as it speeds down the ramp over 130 miles an hour, twisting through the air, landing on its roof, both axles broken, gas tank destroyed. This pigeon just doesn't have what it takes to survive such a crazy jump. And now it's the Buckel Legrand's turn. This car appears to be a mix of a Chrysler LeBaron and an Oldsmobile Toronado. Anyways, let's see if this front-wheel drive-based mid-sized car can survive a run down the ramp. Speed quickly climbs to over 130 miles an hour. It takes to the sky. And it looks like it's going to land nose first. But it seems to have survived. With no major damage. It seems to be moving under its own power. Although very, very difficult to turn. So again, very difficult to control right now. The steering is extremely wonky as it took that impact really hard. However, it's going to make it to, to its destination, which is the gas station right around the corner. So first try, nose first, the Buckle Lagrand survives. And this is our first surviving vehicle of the day. Now we're going to give the ETK a go, which is based on an old BMW. I believe this is the i-series. So we're going to coax it down the ramp and see what happens. I'm going to put its durability to the test as it reaches the bottom of the ramp going over 130 miles an hour, taking off at over 140. It might have a good landing. But like most of the other cars I've tested so far, its drive shaft shattered on impact and the engine itself also didn't survive. So the I-Series will get another go at it. Another run down the ramp. As it 
keeps going down the ramp. Speeds will increase to 140 once again. Can this car survive? Trying. Another rear drive shaft is in pieces, therefore disabling the vehicle. Per perhaps if it had all-wheel drive, maybe it could run, um, still drive away. So we're gonna have to try one more thing, and maybe the drive shaft won't shatter into a thousand pieces. Well, we're about to find out as this ETK races down the ramp. Maybe if we can pitch it a little bit further back, it would we could possibly get it to survive. No, another rear drive shaft broken. Wrapped around a tree. And unfortunately, this particular vehicle just doesn't have what it takes to survive. All right, now our next challenger is the Civetta Bolide based on a Ferrari Testarossa. This car is definitely the car you want to drive if you have a need for speed, but does it have the durability to survive a big jump like this? The engine in the back, perhaps we won't have driveline issues, but will the car be able to steer after impact? Well, this is going to land on its roof. Oh, and the gas tank exploded. The car is on fire, and there's no chance of recovery. So we're going to give the Civetta another go. Hopefully we can coax it not to land on its roof. Racing down the ramp. It's going to exceed speeds of 130 miles an hour. Another gas tank ruptured. But can we get it to roll back on its feet? No. So we're gonna have to try another strategy to perhaps keep this car upright. So one more time for the Belide. Racing down the ramp to ever increasing speeds. And in the air it goes. Maybe if we could turn it like this, maybe we have a chance? Nope. For the third straight time, it also lands on its roof. And exploding into a fiery, destructive mess. Alright, our next challenger is a Gavril Barstow with apparently... A very special orange interior. Anyways, uh, let's give this car a go. Down the ramp. The only car to have survived this uh, so far has been the Legrand on its very first attempt. And most of the others have suffered failed drive shafts. Let's see how this car compares. Lands hard. But it's got a chance. No major damage. It pulls hard to the left. And the car seems to be dragging the ground, but it is indeed drivable. And so we have our second successful survivor here in the Barstow. Also on its very first attempt, making its way to the fuel pump. Alright, our next challenger is the Ibishu 200BX, which is obviously inspired by the Nissan 240SX of the S13 variety. Anyways, let's take this four-cylinder sport coupe down the ramp. The 
the Barstow was the first of the rear-wheel drive cars to actually survive without snapping drive shafts or exploding. Let's see how the BX does. As it flies through the air. And the drive shaft is broken, disabling the 200 BX. So we're going to have to think of something else to keep the drive snap the drive shaft from snapping. As it takes another go down the ramp. Reaching speeds of 140 miles an hour. Let's see if I can coax it to land. Well, much better result. A much better result for the 200 BX this time. With only exhaust damage, it actually steers pretty well. And on its second attempt, the 200 BX survives the long arduous trek based on a mix between a Honda Civic and a Geo Metro this Ibishu Covet gets its turn down the ramp and this will be the last car we test today racing down the ramp at 140 miles an hour Let's see how it fares. Pretty ugly landing. One of its drive shafts breaks as it rolls end over end. It lands on its um, wheels, but apparently this car does not have a limited slip or a locking differential of any kind. So, second attempt for the Covet as it races down the ramp. Of course, the Covet being front wheel drive, you don't want those front drive shafts to snap. And of course, that's exactly what happens. As the Covet once again rolls end over end, landing on its roof, Unable to continue. And now, one last attempt for the Covet. We await with bated breath to see if this Covet can actually survive the biggest jump of its life. Not gonna happen! Another broken drive shaft! And of course that means this car will not move under its own power. The Covet has failed. And this is to say, you won't be coveting this example. So we had three survivors today. In the Barstow, the 200BX, and the Lagrand. Anyways, thanks for watching.